Open your Bibles with me for a little bit in Jeremiah, please. Jeremiah chapter 18. You know, uh, for the last couple of Sundays, I've been teaching on spiritual perfection. And when I use the word perfection, Jesus said, uh, be as perfect as my, husband, my father is in heaven. And then he said, there's another scripture that says, uh, the disciple is never greater than his master, but he can be as perfect as his master. The word perfect there in the Greek, it means to mature, to be developed, to come to adulthood, to grow up. And the Bible says it's from faith to faith, and the, the just will live by faith. It's a progressive growth. Uh, it's, it's from glory to glory. Uh, it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we all, with open faces beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So spiritual growth is progressive, but we, we found out some things this morning. We'll go over it again. That in order for you to grow spiritually, first of all, the very first thing you must realize is that that's your calling. That's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's what Paul meant in Philippians when he said, I have not yet apprehended that for all which have been apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Then he said, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto you have attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. For in other words, to whatever level of maturity you have, uh, have apprehended by faith in Christ, uh, uh, don't lose it. Don't go backwards. Go forwards. And, and, and you know, it's little by, by little bit. Here a little, there a little. It, it's not instantaneous. Uh, your spiritual growth it, 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 you don't go to bed one night being two years old and wake up the next morning being 30. It may seem like you did, but it didn't happen that fast. You, you grew according to how your body partook of the natural food, spiritually speaking. Uh, but a lot, I think the devil's deceived a lot of people into thinking, well, I prayed a prayer. Uh, I got, now, now, there's a lot of people, Christians, who got born again, but they never went on anywhere in the Lord. Never, never grew in knowledge or wisdom. They never, the, the, the fruits of the Spirit never grew in them, love. You, you know, it's supposed to, your, your love is supposed to grow and increase. Uh, your faith, matter of fact, the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Your faith should be growing. It's like a mustard seed, and, and it's got to be planted, watered, fertilized, taken care of, and it grows. So your, your faith got to grow. You got to grow uh, your knowledge, your wisdom, uh, holiness. Uh, obedience, uh, every aspect of your walk with God, it, there's a, there should be progress. It should be advancement. It should be, you should be being developed and matured. And, and, and the devil, he, he doesn't want you to grow spiritually because then you become a threat. I, I guarantee Pastor Pete is way more of a threat today than he was when he first came here. Is that not right, Pete? Are you more of a threat to the devil? Well, sure you are. I know you are because you weren't moving in that place. Now, don't for a second think it's because of us he's growing. No, Brother Pete saw the need for him to grow spiritually. And he began to apply himself to grow spiritually. And, you know, it, it, even in the natural knowledge and education, you know, there are some people drop out of high school and they don't think they need an education at all. And somebody else to get it in their head. No, I'm, I need to go on and, and even to the point where I get my master's, my bachelor's, my doctorate, whatever, uh, to become an MD. Or, and, and they go on because they, they see in the natural that they need to grow in order to fulfill the dream or the vision or the purpose of their lives. OK, well, if there's anything we need to do is we need to grow spiritually and and I don't think we ought to get to a place I don't care how old we are and Paul said I have not yet apprehended that for which I've been apprehended now Paul had apprehended quite a bit I mean come on I mean Paul was really walking and moving in in a place in the Holy Ghost that some of us can't hardly imagine and yet Paul said I've not yet apprehended but he said, but let us therefore as many as be mature be thus minded. For in other words, this maturity of I'm here because why did God create me? To be in his likeness and his image. 
That, that was God's plan. I mean, it's hard to understand that Genesis 1.26 reveals to us God's whole purpose. Now, can you imagine, and I, I believe what the Word of God says. You might not believe it, but I believe that man has only been here for 6,000 years. I believe that the earth and all that God created has only been here for 6,000 years. Now, what's amazing is God has always existed. God the Father, God the Son or the Word, and God the Holy Ghost, they've always existed. They've always existed. Can you explain that? No. I, and and I, I don't even know if we get an eternity we're going to understand it. God is, and I'm so God, glad He is the God He is. But He's always existed. But in all of those previous aeons and aeons and aeons, God never spe- said a word. God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Ghost, the three in one, the triunity of God, perfect, a perfect God, perfect. He never said a word. But one day in Genesis 1-1, God said, He created the Word. All things were made by the Word, and without the Word was nothing made that was made. By the Word. I still think we're really not fully grasping, I know I'm not, the power of the Word of God Hidden in a human heart. The power, because he upholds all things by the word of his power. Not by his imagination, but by the word. He upholds it all by the power of his word. You know, I'll give you an example here. Last month, I, I kind of made a commitment. And, and I've always, I make commitments all the time to Christ. But I said, you know what, God? Um, I have decided that I am going to grow a little bit every day spiritually. Uh, uh, I've lost ground through the years. 47 years I've been born again and been preaching. I said, I- I'm going to make some spiritual ground here. I said, when I get up in the morning till I go to bed at night, uh, forgetting those things that are behind, that means the things that would interfere, that would get between me and you, uh, I- I've just got to cut them off. I've got to crucify and mortify them. And, and, and I've got to get my focus. I need, I, need, I need to grow up. Now, there are certain scriptures that have always had a powerful impact on me when I was 19 years old. And I saw when Jesus was 12 when he told Joseph and Mary, Know ye not that I must be about my father's business. And Jesus said, It is written of me in a volume of books. I come to do thy will, O God. And so I saw that, that Jesus... Uh, at 12 years old, he, he knew what he was here for. He knew what he was called to do. He, he knew what the Father was going to have him perform while he was on the earth. That, that's the kind of relationship he had. And I grabbed a hold of that. I said, you've got a purpose for me. You've got a plan for me. You've got a mission for me. And I'm going to be about my Father's business. Now, uh, 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 that, that is like an anchor in the storm. Now, at times, though, uh, I've been moved and, and I've been uh, uh, deceived and I've gone astray. But aren't you glad that a righteous man can fall down seven times and get back up again? And, and so I saw that right away. And, and, and so that was the motivator of my life. It always has been. I, I've got a purpose. And, and, and in my mind, I always see a big hourglass. And I, I watched the sand. That's, I wrote a book back there called God's Blue Light Special. And, and at Kmart, they used to have a blue light. My mom used to take me to Kmart. And when that blue light began to go off, you better watch out because the women were headed for that sale. Not the man. The women were run. And they knew that it was only for a limited amount of time. And this side of heaven, to me, is the land of opportunity. And that's why I, I, you say, Pastor, how come you get so obsessed with writing books? Well, it's not the books I think are going to make the difference. It's the truth in the books. Last week I wrote two books alone, and this week I'm, all right, I'm already working on another book this coming week. And, and why are you doing this, Pastor Mike? Because I, I've got this reality that I, I want to reach and I want to touch and I want to help as many as I can. Uh, Because when I stand before him, I'm going to say, Lord, look what your pound did. You gave me a pound, God, and look what it did. Look, it it touched lives. And I'm breaking on Jesus because I know how many books are being moved. And every day, hundreds of books that that I produced are being bought or given away. Hundreds of them. And I'm saying, Lord, that one person can touch a hundred people, a thousand people, a million people. 
And so I, I want to touch lives, but I realize I'm running out of time. And so I, gotta, I, I said, Lord, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start growing a little bit more every day, every day. I'm going to reclaim a lost ground and get beyond where I've ever been before spiritually. I'm going to get where I've been spiritually. Why? Because I want to be a vessel meet for the master's use. See, I, I don't have to uh, struggle to get God to show up. Pete was telling us it came easy, didn't it, Pete? It came easy to get that precious lady healed when you're under the spout where the glory pours out. I, I call it the, 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 the spiritual sweet spot. I mean, you know what I mean by it, the sports Came, world came out with that. It, it, there's that perfect place on that bat where the ball hits, and you're going to hit a home run, right? You used to be a big baseball guy, weren't you? There's a sweet spot, and in everything, there's a, just the right environment, the right place, the right position. I want you to know there is a place like that in the realm of the Spirit. Now, Jesus lived there 24-7 because he walked and he moved in the Spirit, now, we're not seeking experiences, but I'm telling you, experiences will come. But we need to grow spiritually. And I want to read, because really, I think the generation that, that Jeremiah was in is to some extent like the church today and the government. And this is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my... And this is Jeremiah 18, verse 2. I will cause thee to hear my... Words, it's always the word. It's always the word. God confirms his word with signs following. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So this is really, if you had time to go into this, he's talking about the condition of Israel. Here, God had wonderful plans for Israel, for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, but through the years, the, the decades, the generations, the people of Israel had become corrupt. The teachers of the law had become corrupt, selfish, materialistic, uh, uh, worldly, fleshly, evil even. The government had become evil. I think it's just like America. And, and it looked like it's a mess. What, I can't do nothing with this. It's all marred. It's all, it's just a, the pottery is just a mess. And so God sends Jeremiah down there. And, and this is what, and this is, it's so easy for God. Say, it's easy for God. Now, I'm telling you, there's nothing difficult for God. Nothing. When God created the heavens and the earth in those six days, if you could have heard him, he wasn't grunting and groaning and trying to get something done. It was easy peasy. Just peaches and cream, cotton candy. God said, let there be. I mean, that's how it is sometimes when you're in that sweet spot of the spirit. It's just easy. You all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever got somebody healed and you were in that place? And even as Pete said many times, I've just simply whispered to a person. I whispered, and the devil came out. I whispered. When that woman died at Cracker Barrel, and the spirit, because faith worketh by love and compassion hit me, and my wife was there, and I pushed my way through the crowd, and the dead woman was on the floor, and all I did is I got down and put my hand on her cold, dead face, and I whispered, in the name of Jesus, I command you to live. And she came right back to life. Like it was nothing. You know why? Because it is nothing with God. But see, God is trying to find vessels. He's trying to find people. He's trying to find those who are in the sweet spot. Whose heart is after him. All they want is him. All they need is him. They have found their purpose in life. And their purpose is to be just like God. To be one with him. Now, that's, think about this. Like, did you ever think about this? When, when we leave here, and of course, heaven's already populated with multitudes and multitudes. Hey, you know, did you know there's a promise? He said, it's the sands of the sea, so shall be the seed of Abraham. You, you know, heaven is not going to have just a little bit of population. It is going to be populated. 
I don't understand it all, but he said it's the stars of heaven and the sands of the seashore. It is going to be populated. And right now, there are uh, uh, multitudes and multitudes of people in heaven who have nothing to do than to be just like God. <laughs> now, now, just think about that. They have nothing to do but then be, to be just like God. You said that sounds boring. That's because you've never been God. <laughs> nothing to do. Throughout eternity, you get this group, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm, no, you're just going to eat from the tree of life. And you're just, you're not, matter of fact, it's going to be exciting. You're never even going to sleep. You're not going to be bored. You're not going to be at night going through YouTube trying to find something interesting. Or, or looking down and say, what's going on? Listen, those in heaven, they're not looking down at the earth and say, I wonder what's going on down there. We're not even in their thoughts. Listen, they're just having the time of eternity. Hallelujah. Well, you know, really, if you take to the fullness expression, the promises of the scripture, the old covenant, it implies that heaven can be on earth for those who love Christ. He said those who delight themselves in the law of the Lord will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth their fruit in season and, and their leaves shall not wither and whatsoever they do shall prosper. So I got it in my heart. OK, God, here I come. I'm coming after you. Well, I've got a couple of things I needed to be dealt with. I, I got a house up on a hill that was an Ishmael, and I've been trying to sell it really for years, and it finally got to the place where I had to shut it down and shut down the kind of ministry I was doing. And so it's been sitting up on the hill uh, ever since it was shut down. And, and I said, okay, and then there's a trailer out back that we want to move. And, and I'm bragging on Jesus. And, and, and I said in my heart, I said, okay, God, I said it's time for those things to move. I said I command them to be sold now. I'm not greedy. I just want them sold. Let them be sold. And this is what I want. Well, I got home and I, I got a phone call. And it's, it's actually uh, 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 Gary and Wanda's uh, daughter-in-law. She's a real estate agent, Cara. She, call, Cara. she called me up. She said, Pastor Mike, the house is sold. I knew it. I just knew it. If you abide in me, my word abides in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done. I just knew it. And then next thing, the, a guy calls me up. And, and by the way, the people who bought my house, they're Christians. And one of the guys has been to our church a number of times. They're construction workers. And they're going to take that house, rebuild it, fix it all up, and sell it. I said, praise the Lord. I'm here to help you guys. But I'm not picking up a hammer. <laughs> I said, I can give you suggestions, you know. And so I gave them a tour of it, which isn't normal. Because usually they want to keep the buyer and the seller separated by the sense of my heart. Offer your help. And, and, so, and then I got another phone call from another guy who uh, lives down in Delaware somewhere, works down somewhere, down in, uh, in Maryland somewhere. He said, I, I want to buy your trailer. And he came up, and, and he paid us what we wanted for our trailer, lickety slick. <laughs> Boom, sold. Like it's nothing. Say like it's nothing. Now like unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that it's working in us. Who's work? Christ is working in us. His word is working in us. His spirit is working in us. His promises are working in us. His nature, his character, his personality is at work in us. And, and, and you, get, you get in the spot. You get under the, what is it? You, you get under the spot where the glory comes out. I call it the spiritual sweet spot where God just shows up. And, and, and I think through the years, I accidentally tapped into that, not really realizing it. I'm not talking about trying to work it up. I'm not trying to talk about deserving it. I'm just saying that you have a heart that's after God. Now, look up the word perfect in the Old and New Covenant. You couldn't under, you, it's amazing how it says that, that and he had a heart that was perfect towards God. And what, what is a perfect heart? A, a perfect heart is one who agrees with God, and all they want is the will of God. That's all they want. They have no other agenda. It's not like they really want to be seen or heard. You know, if I wasn't called to be in a position I am, an apostle, uh, and whether people accept it or not, I don't care. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't choose this position. I just, when I got born again, I knew God said, preach the gospel. I didn't even know what a preacher was, being a Catholic. But I knew God said, preach the gospel. And so I began to preach right away and declare the gospel. Because that's what God's called me to do. That's why I do what I do. And you're going to do what you do if you know what God's calling is in your life. 
And, and it goes on to say here that this, the, 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 the Israel people, the Jewish people were a mess. And it says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. Say, made it again. Amen. He made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy it. Remember, then he told Jeremiah to build and plant. He said, don't, don't, the Bible says, don't fret yourself over the evildoers. All you got to do is get where you need to be spiritually. I mean, it was, you know, I always kind of knew this as a pastor, that I, I would pray for people and be there for people. But, but one thing the Lord told me from the beginning, because in the beginning I didn't use wisdom, and people wore me out, running here, running there. They wanted me to be their answer, their solution, or remedy. And one day the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, you're not their answer. Give them the word. Yeah, be there for them, pray, but you're not their answer, because man love to look to man. They love to exalt men. They, they, and, and I'm talking about, and, and, and my children, they didn't seem like they should have when they were younger. And it was burning me out. I mean, I was just wearing myself out, running here, praying there, praying there. Not that we ain't supposed to pray. But the Lord said, listen, you, 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 you think you're hot stuff? You're not their answer. I'm their answer. Teach them how to trust me. Teach them how to look to me. Teach them how to believe me. And, and, and not to think they got to go through you. That's Catholicism. Catholicism teaches you that you got to go through the priest or the bishop or the pope. No, you got to go to Jesus. And so I'm doing you a disservice if I get you to thinking I'm something hot and special and anointed. No, I'm going to teach you how to look to Jesus and you can get a hold of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And the works that Jesus did, you can do also. Yeah, there are those that we respect and we look up to. Them that labor in the word and doctrine are worthy of double honor, but they're not worthy of worship. So you, you won't hear me. You, you say, you brag on Smith Wigglesworth. No, I don't. I, I talk about the fact he was a plumber, and if God could use a dumb plumber, he can use you. And he can use me. See, that ought to give you hope. He said, if that nation against whom I have pronounced uh, turned from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at that instant, say that instant, I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. So he said, pull down, destroy, uh, you know, dig it up. But he said, then he says, but I can build it and plant it again. Guess what? How many know he did this 70 years later with Israel? They were taken into captivity. Jerusalem was pulled down. The temple was destroyed. All the gold. I mean, it was a place fit for nothing but jackals and coyotes and snakes and thistles. And how many of you been to Israel since it became a nation? I'm telling you what, you go over there and it's a fertile, fruitful, productive place. And when they took it back over, and I'm talking about after World War II now, I'm telling you what, now nobody wanted it. And now they all want it. Because God turned it around. Say, God can turn it around. God can turn it around. Now, now, this can be used for your own personal life. I'm telling you, God can turn your life around. You may not feel like you're productive, you're fruitful, you're beneficial, that God can use you. It's all lie of the devil. You put, your, you put your life into the hands of the potter, and if you're clay, that's moldable and shapeable. See, that's the problem. A lot of times we're not moldable and shapeable. Because we got certain ideals and certain thoughts and certain desires and certain ambitions inside of us. And, and, and if you ever, my wife used to do a lot of pottery. And you get, you get some hard, hard, uh, like stones in there or hard clay. And you know what? You got to bust those. You got to bust those parts. There's things in us that's hindering God from moving in the way he wants to. There's certain things, you know, Gary was talking about that there's barriers in front of you. You don't allow those barriers. They're not just the devil. They're man-made. I mean, how many people, I talked about Smith Wigglesworth for years and years. He got born again when he was eight years old. But he heard about people getting baptized in the Holy Ghost when he was 48. 
and he kind of foo fooed it away. Speaking in tongues. No, no, when I got born again, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost don't save you. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus resurrects you. Wouldn't you acknowledge that? Jesus is the quickening spirit. It's Jesus that saved your soul, not the Holy Ghost. It's Jesus that raised you from the dead. And, and so the resurrection of Christ, though, he, the, the spirit of Christ came in and he got born again. But he, oh, I got the Holy Ghost. I got. So he mocked it. Well, he thought that God must have got a hold of him. So he went to the meeting. And for three days, he argued with those people. No, no, no. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I got him when I got born again. And you know what? Finally, he, 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 he must have saw something because he went to the preacher's house and he had to leave after the third day. And he said to the preacher, fell on his knees in the kitchen and he had the vicar's wife lay hands on him and said, I'm not leaving till I get the Holy Ghost. He got filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And from then on, his life was never the same. But he got born again when he was four, eight years old. So my wife got filled with the Holy Ghost when she was 10 years old or 8 years old. But I'll tell you what, so for 40 years, he was not experiencing the power of the Holy Ghost because he had wrong doctrine. Don't tell me wrong doctrine can't hurt you. You came out of a Baptist church, didn't you? One of you did, did you? You did. Did that interfere with you getting baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? A little bit. Well, sure it did, because of wrong doctrine. So it's best just to go back to it. But he said, I, I can do this. God said, I'm more than able to do this. So we're talking about growing spiritually. How many of you want to grow spiritually? You want to grow spiritually? You want to go further than what you've been? I mean, if you're like in third grade, don't you want to go to fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade and seventh grade and eighth grade? And the thing is, in the kingdom of God, there is no end to how far you can go. Well, the very first thing, there's five major steps involved in all of this. First of all, you've got to see God's plan, God's purpose for your life is to grow spiritually. No matter how old you are, you, you got to go, you got to mature. When I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Notice, if you're going to grow up, guys, you got to put away your G.I. Joes, and girls, you got to put away your Barbie dolls. At least when I was a kid, that's what they were. You got to put away your games. You got to put away your foolishness. You got to put off the flesh. If you want to grow up, it's because the only reason people in sports let go of the things of this world is to win a gold medal in the Olympics is because they got a goal and a purpose and a plan. And I told you this morning, that is the foundation of your spiritual growth, that you know that God created you to become just like him. Period. I want to be just like Jesus. Anybody else want to be that like Jesus? I've got to be. And now we're talking about his nature. I mean, I mean, you know, for years and years, I didn't recognize, I really did, that gentleness and kindness and meekness was fruits of the Spirit. I was raised in a rough and tumble military family. I mean, my dad was a dictator, really, and I thought that's what I was supposed to be when I got married, but I married a woman who wouldn't accept that. <laughs> she would not agree. She didn't think I had the authority to tell her what to do. <laughs> you know, and that may, sound, that may not sound good, but it, it really did. It, did. it put me back on my heels. Because, see, I, my, my, my dad would beat my mom into submission, but I'm born again. I'm a Holy Ghost man. I can't beat her into submission. I, I tried to use my mouth, but it didn't work. You know, some women just can't be beat into submission with their ugly, nasty, mean, low-down, cruel, uh, uh, evil tongue. Look straight ahead. <laughs> and I had a woman like that, and it really helped me. Because I said, I'm going to lose my mind if I can't control her. I know that's, it sounds bizarre, but it, it, I was raised in that kind of home. My dad, he was king. And in all those years until my dad died, I always never argued with my dad. I just say, yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, sir, no, sir. That's, now, that's good when it comes to Christ. When it learns to submitting to God, that helped me there. But it didn't help me in my marriage, you know. <laughs> but see, I didn't know meekness and kindness and gentleness and long-suffering was a part of of God's divine nature. But I discovered it one day back in 2005. And I began to recognize, God, I'm supposed to be gentle. 
I'm supposed to be not just during the dating time. <laughs> not just during the months of dating. They let in sweet, nice, and kind. No, I mean, that is through your whole life, and it's supposed to increase. I should be more kind and more gentle and more teachable and more humble tomorrow than I am today if I am growing spiritually. But I began to get a revelation of the character of God, the meekness of Christ, that when he was reviled, he reviled not. When he was accused, he did not respond, but he put himself into the hands of God, who is the judge of all men. So you have to see you need this. You need this. You need this divine personality. That's the greatest thing you could ever want in this world is to be like God. To just be like God. No, I don't want to be God. I just I want to be like him. You understand in my character, my nature. In my, so number one, you got to have a vision. Number two, I, I t- if you want to grow spiritually, you are never going to do it without deep, deep intimacy and relationship with your maker. I mean, that's when the Bible says, pray without ceasing. What is that? That, that prayer isn't you asking for what your flesh wants. You, you, you are talking. For notes, I say it this way. You are walking with the King of kings and King, Lord of lords. You look up how many people walked with God. I was amazed. We know that Enoch, when he hit 350 years old, he got it. Now, remember, Adam and his wife, they walked with God. They did. They walked with God. But then, you know, here comes the snake, and I really think we could get into this. I don't want to. Adam, he knew the character of the snake because he gave names to the snake, and it says the snake was the craftiest critter in all of God's creation. He, he knew that critter was crafty, uh, but son, for some reason he seemed to be naive, and, 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 and Eve, naive, <laughs> he, he didn't, naive, he didn't take care of her, he didn't protect her. And one day the devil shows up in the snake, and says, hey, I want you to dance with me. I want you to dance with me. Well, he danced with her. I mean, he walked with her. He, or he ex- she accepted what he had to say. And I think this is where Adam all of a sudden, because remember, Adam, in the very beginning, he knew he didn't have someone that he could relate to. I mean, he walked with God, but he didn't have uh, 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 the opposite sex that he could uh, multiply and replenish and, and, and to be one with him. And, 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 and God said it's not good for a man to be alone. Be, because a lot of times, uh, men who are alone, they get into a lot more trouble, don't they? If they don't have a good woman at their side. Now, if you ain't got a good woman, then that's another issue. But, but the reality, the fact is, is that, and so when Adam's wife danced with the devil, he had to choose. I, I, am I going to dance uh, with her, or am I going to dance with God? Am I going to walk with her, and, or am I going to walk with God? And he chose to walk with his wife instead of walking with God. That's what he chose. And I see it going on in the world right now, in the church. People are choosing to walk with the world and then try to walk with God. Now, if we had time, I don't have time, I could bring two men up here. And I would say, this man represents God, and this man represents the world. Now, they're completely opposite. And now, you go ahead, and, and I, God, you go ahead, and you go this way, and, and, and world go that way. And now, have another guy standing here and saying, okay, now choose who you're going to walk with. Well, they're, they're opposite. You can't walk with God and the world. If I try to run after God Sundays, and then rest of the week running after the world, I, I'm not going to not only not grow spiritually, I'm going to lose ground because every day, every day, every week, every month is getting farther and farther apart. And so now and eventually what happens, people who got it in their head, they got to walk with the world. They got to find out what's going on in the world. They got to be a part of the entertainment system. They got to be a part of the new system. They got to be a part of the uh, 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 whatever it is. You know what? The day will come when all of a sudden God's gone over the horizon. They don't even know where God's at. I mean, I've seen a lot of them. They just go the way of the world. And how, how many have ever done that? So, yeah, so God walked. And then Enoch, he walked with God. 
Enoch got it in his head, in his heart, at 350 years, I am going to walk with God, and then he was not. No, probably not going to go much further than this tonight, because I want you to know that the most important thing there is, is you walking with God. Now, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And over and over, he talked, Paul talked about following him. Matter of fact, did you know how Jesus got his disciples? He never begged anybody to be a part of his team. He, he would do the will of the Father. He would preach the word. He, he told the guys, remember, he had 70 disciples. They're all walking with him, right? They're all walking. They're coming back. Oh, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us, thy name. But he knew the time would come because as you walk with God, it, you might say it this way, it begins like a big old funnel. But as you walk with Jesus, all of a sudden, it gets more and more and more narrow. And all of a sudden, there ain't many people with you. Jesus had multitudes and multitudes following him. And then he began to say, okay, let me tell you what's involved with walking with me, guys. you got to forsake the world. We just sang it. Take up your cross this morning. Take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. If you love your mother, your brother, your sister, even your own life more than me, you're not fit to be my disciple. And so he got him to the place where he literally said, now listen to me, guys. You want to really walk with me? Because my whole purpose, they didn't, they, of course, John, it wasn't there yet, John 17, this is John 6. He said, you're going to have to eat my flesh, and you're going to have to drink my blood. You want to be one with me? You want to be just like me? You're going to have to abide in me, and my word's going to have to abide in you, and you'll produce much fruit. And they got offended. And they walked away. And then Jesus turns around and he says to the 12, he says, okay, how, how about you guys? Now, wait a minute. He's not telling them to leave. He's, not, he's just being honest. He's being blunt. He's being straightforward. He, he's not mincing his words. He, he just, he, he's not being deceitful. Oh, just come in and be a part of my team and be a part of our fellowship and be a part of what we're doing, and we'll take care of all the other stuff later on. Well, you don't have to read the fine print right now. No, Jesus, he didn't have no fine print. He wasn't trying to manipulate people and deceive people. He, he taught me. In fact, he said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. He said, all that live righteously will be persecuted. He told them like it was. He said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Them 70 got offended. He said, he said to, to the guys, he said, y'all want to go? And they're dumbfounded because they're watching these 70 people that they've been working with and ministering with. They're just all walking away, angry, upset. He's teaching cannibalism. And Jesus said this, you guys want to still walk with me? Them guys don't. They don't want to walk with me because they really don't want what I want. They don't really love what I love, and they don't really hate what I hate. You know why Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy above his fellows? Because he loved righteousness, and he hated iniquity. He hated it. Why? Because look what is, it's, it's, it's sin that dug hell. It's sin that has sent multitudes and multitudes into an eternal darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the fire's never quenched and the worm never dies. You believe that? Absolutely, I believe it. And the way gets more and more narrow. But let me tell you something. Enoch, one day, he got so close to God, he wasn't born again. And God just took him. <laughs> took him! said Noah was perfect in all of his generation, and Noah walked with God. He said to Abraham, scripture after scripture, look it up, the word walk. He says, if you're going to walk with me, he, I think it's 70 times God said, walk with me and be ye perfect. In the old covenant, he said, walk with me, keep my commandments, keep my precepts, keep my laws, walk with me, and I will bless you above all nations. He said, Abraham, be ye perfect and walk with me. God's inviting you to walk with him, to fellowship with him, <laughs> to have intimacy with him. Now, that was Esau's inheritance. He didn't want it, but Jacob did. And Jacob got alone with God, and he got to wrestling with God, and his hip was put out. He wouldn't let go. He said, no, God, I don't care. 
And he, he wanted something from God. He said, he, you know what he wanted? Jacob means deceiver. He knew what his name meant. He deceived his brother out of his inheritance. He deceived his, his daddy, uh, uh, Isaac, you know. He, 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 he deceived him. He said, I want to get rid of this deceptive attitude. He said, I'm hungry, but I'm deceptive. I'm hungry for you, God. I want more of you, God, but I'm a manipulator. I don't want to be a manipulator anymore. And so he met God one night, and they wrestled. and wouldn't let God go. And God said, you got to let me go. He said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me he knew he wanted he said okay he said your name is changed you're no longer a manipulator a deceiver a conniver you are now a prince with God your name is Israel oh praise the Lord so you got to walk with God and through the generations David walked with God he had a heart after God he walked with God see that's that's the sweet spot and you can walk with God if you want to and I'll just give you the other quick points, and we'll have to get into them. But intimacy with God, there is no way you're going to walk without God without the truth in your heart. I, I thank God for the word so much. I told my wife and my kids the other day, it just, it had to be God as a baby Christian. It just, I knew that I knew that I needed God's word because I had no control over my thinking capacity. What do you mean? My, my mind was everywhere. My mind was filled with violence and pornography. All, listen, I had the most wickedest mouth. The only thing I knew was four-letter words that were nasty. That's all I knew. I mean, that's what came out of me. Filth, puke, uh, garbage came out of me. So when I got born again, I, I didn't know it, but my mind needed to be renewed, but because transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I began to take the word of God, and I began to eat it and drink it and think it and talk it and sing, and sing it, and my mind became transformed. And in 47 years, I think maybe just once or twice have I ever cussed again in all of those years. What did it, Pastor Mike? It was the word of God. David said, I've hid your word in my heart. He said, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. You can't, listen, God wants you to walk with him, so he gave you the book. How to walk with him. Give me your Bible, brother. He gave you this book for you to know, especially beginning with Matthew. You want to know how to walk with God? Be doers of the word and not heroes only. Deceiving yourself. You want to walk with God? You want God to show up? You want God to manifest himself? You know what he says? He, he said, Jesus said, because thou hast loved me, my father loves you, and because you love me, I will manifest myself to you. He said, and this is love, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Whoa, that's not legalism. The word is freedom. You will know the truth. You, you want to you wanna be uh, under the spout where the glory pours out? You want to be in that spiritual uh, sweet spot? You want to be where God would just come? I'm telling you how to do it. First of all, recognize why you're here. Make that your purpose. I'm here for you, Jesus. Well, I can't be a good father that way. I can't be a good mother. I can't be a good worker. Oh, he'll make you a better worker. Look at Joseph. That's where Joseph, Joseph found that sweet spot. He was persecuted. He was lied about. He was, he was sold into slavery. He was, he was lied about Pot, with Potiphar's wife. He ended up in prison. But the guy ended up running the, ruling the greatest nation that had ever been. Oh, ain't this good? Anybody else here a fanatic? I mean, come on, man. It's there for all of us. But see, the word got into my mind. It got into my heart. And I became a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things will become new. And of course, then you got to believe. You got to have faith. You got to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible. He that cometh to God must believe he is, and he is a rewarder. Pastor, you're repeating yourself. You need it. You need it. I need it. Hey, if I need to hear my save this stuff over and over and over and over, you need to hear it until you do it. Until you do it. And until you begin to practice it. And until you begin to put it to work. Amen. And to, you know, I, I remember counseling people through the years, and I got to the place where I realized that most counseling is useless. Because most times, especially marriages, because he believes she's wrong, she believes he's wrong, and they're trying to convince you the other person is the bad person. 
And so you sit them down and say, brother, let me show you what the word says. Sister, let me show you what the, wi- the wife said. Honey, he- here's what the Bible says. Wife, submit yourself unto your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. That went over like a lead balloon. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So here's what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about your wife submitting. And wife, don't worry about your husband loving. You do. Here it is. Let's do the word. Now, here's the word. And I get sit down with them. And I say, now, I gave you homework. I gave you scriptures. What would you do with it? And they look at you like a cow, a, a, a cow at a new gate. Duh. He goes, man, I'm going to have to pray because... Because me giving you verbal instructions and giving you scriptures ain't working. Why? Because you don't believe the scriptures. The first generation died because they did not mix faith with the word. And this is the problem with a lot of believers. They won't mix faith with the word. So when the devil comes and attacks them, whatever way it is, let's say financially. The devil attacks you financially. And you, and, 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 and the word says, it does. Now, I know it's talking about relationships. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom, or whatever other scriptures talks about, that, that God will supply all of your needs, uh, that you're a liberal giver. And so financial problems come to a Christian home, and the first thing they think in the natural is, we, we can't afford to keep tithing. Or we can't afford to keep supporting. We can't. Did you know that during the Obama years, it went from 17% of those who confessed to know Christ of tithing down to 3%? 3%. And I don't care about people giving. You know why? Because God meets our needs. But see, unbelief kicked in. And unbelief said, oh. You know. But you know what? You ask my wife what we've done through the years. When financial hardship hit us, what have we done, baby? We increased our giving. We said, nanny, 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 you devil. You don't want us to give? You watch this. And we would spit in the devil's face. Many times as a church, when I couldn't pay the mortgage and I couldn't pay the electric bill and I couldn't heat the building, I would take everything into our checking account. And I would say, watch this, devil, and send it to another ministry. Many times. Why? It's faith. Faith. You know why you got healed this morning, sister? Because you came to church. You're back. Man, it was, I saw you coming in, man. You were just like, I'm going devil. You ain't stopping me. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how I look. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. She couldn't even get up to lead worship, so I brought the microphone back to her. But God healed her. Praise the Lord. Faith without works is dead. What good is dead faith? I think, well, during COVID, I I wouldn't come, not because I was concerned about spreading COVID, but because I know it would be used of the devil to say, Pastor Mike don't care about spreading COVID, so he's here. Though I knew other families were coming here with COVID, and I didn't tell them to stop coming, and I didn't tell anybody why. (laughs) Because you got to believe God wherever you go. You go to Walmart, you go to Lowe's, you go to the grocery store. How do you know those people spitting, coughing, and carrying on over all of your, your, your groceries and your shopping cart? And the, the girl who is passing your food over, she's probably loaded with COVID. And you think you're not going to, you think that little piece of, of, of paper in front of your mouth that's keeping all the filthy germs inside of you, you think that's going to protect you? But I think in all of these years, only two times in being here for 40 years and all these years of preaching, I think only two times I didn't preach when I was sick. Only two times. And the one I really had no excuse. I was just looking for an excuse not to preach that night. Because many, many times I preached with nobody here. You ask Pastor Pete. Our Thursday night services, 95% of the time, it's only Brother Pete and my family. That's it. And you ask my kids many times when they didn't even want to go to church, I'm still who preaching on because I'm doing it as on to Jesus. I'm going to be faithful. Faith with works. I want to grow spiritually. How about you? And then comes the quickening of the spirit. 
Ooh. Wow. You got the foundation. I'm going to grow. That's my call. That's my purpose, my plan. Whether there's anybody here or not, whether I have a pulpit to preach in or not, whether or not I've got a platform, it don't matter. I'm called to grow spiritually to become like God. And I'm called to walk with him. I'm going to walk with him and talk with him. You know, what's that old song, Pastor Gary? Going to walk and talk and... Come on, sing it louder. What is it? What is that old song? In the garden. garden. Going to walk in the garden. Going to fellowship with him. And then, of course, it's the word and it's faith. And now comes the Holy Ghost. See, people are trying to get the Holy Ghost to come before those things. No, no, no. The Holy Ghost comes. See, listen, the apostles were in those four areas. They had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. What do you think Jesus was doing in those three and a half years with those men and those women? He was affecting them. He was influencing them. He was, uh, a minute. He was they were absorbing him. They were assimilating. You, you can assimilate a, a, a person's personality? Well, sure. That's why they say one bad apple can spoil the whole, the whole bushel basket. Listen, bad influences, well, 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 you get around the wrong people as a child, it can influence you. How many of you know that? That's why my children, we were really, really, not because we thought our children were better than others, but we, we never told them, but we kept them away from certain children. We just, we said, if, if they came, they'd have to come to our house. No, no, let them come here, honey. Let them come here. Yeah, but they want me to go to their house. Uh, true story, my, my family and I, we were invited to a, a person's house, and they were kind of like in leadership, and we went there and walked in there, and the teenagers were all gathered around a TV set. My ki- kids were a little bit younger, and it was just pure filth. I'm telling you, it was the world. It was the world. My wife and I looked at each other, and we said, you know, we're going to hang around a little bit, but then we're going to leave. And we did. We pulled our case. We said, come on, we're still, we got to leave. We had to leave. We had to leave. I wasn't going to let that stuff get into my children's hearts and minds and lives and corrupt them because their souls are precious to me. No, did I mess up? Yeah, I've messed up in certain areas. Did, did you get something here tonight? Yes. Well, give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Yes. Under the spot where the glory pours out. Under the spot where the glory pours out. It's time, brother. It's time. It's time. God's really wanting to move. He said, I've I've been preparing you, and I've been training you, and I've been teaching you. I'm hearing the Lord say it's time to make a break. I don't know what that means. It's time to make a break. It's time to cut the strings. Things that are hindering you spiritually. You've been struggling with it a little bit. But the Lord said, I I will carry you. He said, I will catch you. He said, I want to take you to the next level now. I want to take you to the next level. He said, I need to get you out of the rut. That's what I heard the Lord say. I need to get you out of the rut. So, Father, I just pray for my brother now. Woo! Woo! That he would do it. <laughs> it's like I, I see your future, brother, if you'll just obey God. Remember, he, ca- he called Abraham out of the city of the Chaldeans into a place that he did not know. <laughs> God says, I'm calling you out to call you in. (laughs) I'm calling you to walk with me, son. Walk with me. He's calling all of us to walk with him. But you got to decide, do you want to walk with him? How much do you want to walk with him? I I can tell by the Holy Ghost, I look at you and I see by the Spirit. Now, some of you want to walk closer to God than others. And, and that's fine. That's because we're all at different levels, you understand. Uh, you might have caught me some months ago, some years ago, where I was maybe in a place where I wasn't as passionate. 
I wasn't really pressing in as much as I am right now. Will you pray for Pastor Mike that he'll get even more passionate, more obsessed, more possessed, more consumed? Want to go even deeper? But, but your level of spiritual growth, I heard the Lord say this. Oh, don't you not understand? Do you not perceive that where you are at spiritually is determined by you and not by me? Well, I would take you to a place that you've never been before. But you must decide within your heart, you don't want to be where you are now presently. You must say within your heart, God, you've got a call, you've got a purpose, you've got a plan. But in order to go further, you've got to let go of the old and take a hold of the new and go in and possess that I have for you. But if you are content and satisfied where you're at, you'll live in that place the rest of your life, and you'll go to the grave, and you'll be filled with much regret. Because the day will come when you will discover what you could have been, but you had decided it wasn't for you. But it's yours, would say the Lord, if you want it. For you see, your name is written on it. My gifts and my callings are without repentance. And I called you before you were in your mother's womb. I knew what I could do in and through and for you. But you never saw it because you never decided within your heart that I want to go all the way with God. But it's not too late, would say the Lord, for you can still go further. Even as others of old who finally saw the light, their eyes were opened, and they said, here I come, God. I'm going all the way. I've changed my mind. I've repented. I'm yours, spirit, soul, mind, and body. And I took those, even like Enoch at 350. And he got so close to me, I took him up into the glory. So now come. The invitation's gone forth. The dinner bell is ringing. It's time to come. Sit at the table of the Lord, and I'll fill you full to life overflowing. <laughs> Yay, joy unspeakable, peace that passes understanding, divine encounters that the world can never understand. But it's your calling, and it's your choice. Come, let all who would come, come. It's open to everyone, and I'm calling you now. I'm beckoning you by name. If you want it, you can have it, and even so much more. <laughs> yes, that was a prophetic word. So much more, brother. So much more. Come on up here. Will you come up here? So much more. So much more. So much more. So much more, brother. So much more. That's why I just hear, it's like a broken record. The Lord says, son, I have so much more for you. Just let go. I heard the Lord say, let go. I know it feels like a great battle and a great struggle within your mind and your heart in order to let go of those things which are part of your present situation. The Lord said, you can't take a hold of what I have for you unless you let go. Let go and seek my face. Oh, you've experienced my touch, my glory, my presence. I have visited you. I've used you, would say the Lord. Oh, but that's just the tip of the iceberg compared to what I want to do within you. For I want rivers. I want rivers to flow out of you. The Lord says, but I need your mind, and I need your heart, and I need your ears, and I need your mouth, and I need your hands. And if you would be obedient to me, I would use you to set many free. You would deliver the captives. You would break the power of the enemy. But you must choose, would say the Lord. So Father, I pray for my brother. Let your spirit and let your fire come upon my brother and burn within his chest and burn up all the chaff 
burn up all the darkness, burn up everything that would interfere with his divine purpose. Lord, may he get a heart after you. May he get a desire to go all the way, all the way with you in Jesus' name. There it is, brother. Receive it. It's right there if you take it. Take it, brother. Take it. Uh, brother, one more thing. I heard the Lord. Watch. I saw you shaking, and this is what I heard. It said, shake off the shackles of tradition. Woo! I want it. He said, shake off the shackles of tradition because they're hindering you. It's hard to break free from culture sometimes. Break off the shackles. Shake them off. Shake them off. Mm. 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 Prophesy. Prophesy. Call those things that be not as though they were. Tell them to come forth in my name. I've used you in intercessory prayer. I see you standing. I see you declaring the word of the Lord in private, in your own personal prayer life. Lord said, I want you to get back into that place of spiritual warfare. Don't be worn out. Don't be tired by the battle. He said, I'm the one who fights it for you. <laughs> now, I really do. Put your hands on your belly. I sense, put your hands on. I feel God. Lord, give her some joy. <laughs> Let the new wine flow. Let the new wine flow. Let it bubble. Let it, put your hands on your bellies tonight, saints. Say, Lord, let it flow. Let the new wine flow. <laughs> let the new wine flow. Let the new wine flow. Uh, uh, sister, you, you need a touch of God in your physical body. You have some issues in your physical body. You need some touching. Uh, I'm not sure if it's you. Do you have some kind of digestive problem going on? Yeah, that's what the Lord said to me. You have some digestive problems. But, but beyond that digestive problems, you, you've been in a place where you know God, you love God. But it's like I see you in the car and there's a fog that is so thick and heavy at times. You, you just don't know. It, you, it, it's like... You, 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 you know you're on the road, but you can't really tell if you're on the road, and you can't really tell. And I, and I see the wind of the Spirit coming. He's going to blow all of that fog right away. Woo! And all of the confusion is going to go. And, and God's touching your ears uh, spiritually. Do you need healing in your ears naturally? You do. I saw that too. But spiritual healing in your ears. Now, what is this? This is a word of knowledge. I'm not guessing here. When she first came in, I knew she had digestive problems. Put your hands in. I just knew it by the word of knowledge. And I just saw hearing problems. See, I just saw this. You lying spirit of deafness, ear problems, I take authority over you, and I command you to come out. Woo! In Jesus' name, ears be open. <laughs> ears be open. Confusion, go. I, I, I heard the Lord say, I'm going to heal your broken heart. You got a broken heart. God, disappointment has broke your heart. Things you thought could have been never came to pass. The Lord said, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. He said, people have counted you out. He said, no, you're just beginning. Better days are coming. Glorious days are coming. Wonderful days are coming. He said, not only will I fulfill the dreams of your heart, but I'm going to go. See, God's gone way beyond what I could ever dream or imagine. God says, I'm going to go beyond that with you. Now, Lord, I command this digestive system to be healed. In Jesus' name, put your hand over your heart too. Lord, I speak over this, not just this broken heart, but Lord, this, this heart that uh, at times seems, it, does your heart give you problems in the natural sometimes? It does, I saw that, your heart. Woo, woo, 
God, I thank you for healing her heart. Not just her, nat- her, her spiritual heart, but her natural heart, Lord. Those valves. Lord, those valves, those blood vessels, these arteries, open them up and heal them in Jesus' name. <laughs> there it is. There's the fire. There's the fire. Now, Lord, give her some joy. Let it bubble. <laughs> It's a new day. Sister, it's a new day. Spiritual ears that hear. Spiritual ears that will hear the sweet voice of your shepherd. And yes, he loves you. I tell you, he loves you. Don't you ever let the devil lie to you again. Don't you ever question God's love for you. He loves you. And he died for you. And he rose again for you, sister. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Isn't Jesus wonderful? Can you rejoice with her? She needed that. She needed that. She needed that touch. She needed that touch. Sean Decker, you hold on. You hold on. Don't you get discouraged. I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost, don't you? Don't you waver. You just keep pressing in. You keep believing. And, and no, no, your wife hasn't lost her mind. I'm supposed to tell you that. She's not lost her mind. I'm moving in her. And I'm speaking to her. And I'm going to raise you both up for my glory. I heard the Lord say, I'm going to use your whole family, your whole clan. I'm going to call her the clan. I'm going to use your whole clan for my glory. <laughs> you just ain't seen it yet. But I'm going, to use your cl- I'm going to use your whole family for my glory. And I will get glory and honor out of your family, out of your children, and out of your grandchildren. I will get glory, and I will get honor. <laughs> That's what I heard the Lord say. That's what I heard the Lord say. And Pete, I would never lie. And I would never say something to make you happy. But your daughter's coming in. You already know that. But she is coming in. And she is going to be uh, she's going to be on fire for God. And, and you might even have to work to keep up with her. She's coming in. She's coming in. You've already claimed her. You've already confessed. You've already spoke. It's already been quick into your heart. But when I first met your daughter, I knew God's hand was on her life. And she's coming in. You got loved ones that are not living for God? Just reach up and grab them right now by faith. Right now. Right now. Loved ones that are not on fire for God, just grab them. Grab them. Grab them. Grab them. Grab them. In the name of Jesus. They will live for God. They will love God. Well, come on, let's stand to our feet and give the Lord a shout and a hand clap and a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sins are forgiven. Glory. My future is heaven. Well, 